let's let's start with the case. Um, and yes, to answer your question, bigger absolutely is better. In this video, we're going to talk about how to build a flight sim PC. We're going to get into the nuts and bolts of how this thing actually gets built. Okay, so funny thing, I brought uh, my brother in for an interview just to ask him a few quick questions about how to build a PC for flight simulation. I chopped it down a little bit. I'm going to let you guys watch this and really learn uh, a lot about flight simming. Let's jump right into that. I'm going to introduce my brother. His name is Josh. Uh, he comes from a long line of uh, pilots, private pilots, commercial pilots, helicopter pilots. He's a technology guy, always has been. Um, he's built PCs all of his life. If I go, if I need somebody uh, to help me build a computer, it's going to be him. So um, he knows what he's talking about. Um, and he's definitely uh, in that technological sector um, where I don't really know that much about this stuff. So I refer to him. So without further ado, Josh. Hey, hey. Uh, yeah, like you said, I'm A plus certified and uh, I, I've been building my own custom PCs for upwards of 20 years. And uh, not that much has changed, surprisingly, over that amount of time. We're a very flight-oriented family, definitely. <laughs> so, Also, um, you guys might remember Josh from one of my previous videos. Uh, can my brother land my flight simulator? So, And the answer was yes. Yes, I could. Let's start with a case, uh, because my, the way that I'm thinking about things is you get a case, and then you buy all this stuff, and then you, you stick it in there somehow, so... I assume that we start with the case. Maybe that's not the case, um, but I nah. uh, would, yeah, right? See what I did there? <laughs> <Hey -o. laughs> uh, You're going to list this as a comedy video? I, I might. I might have to. Not education, so. You need, um, you need a brick wall behind you. <laughs> <laughs> that I do. I might. Okay, so first of all, uh, starting with the case, totally doable. I understand it's the first thing that you see. It's what everybody else sees when you're done with it. Um Personally, I prefer to start at the motherboard, but that's okay. We can work with this. Um, so let, let's let's start with the case. Um, and yes, to answer your question, bigger absolutely is better. Um, a recurring theme that you're going to notice. Uh, just remember the letters ATX. It's a it's a form factor. There are um, multiple different form factors of types of standards of sizes um, for different. Uh, PCs and um, other things that you can build, like um, phones, tablets, uh, micro ATX is a thing if you if you want a really tiny PC. Um, but your standard uh, uh, your standard tower PC, like what you've got, like what most people have, is just standard ATX form factor, and you're going to find that in a, in a full tower size and in a server tower size. And I'm going to recommend one of those. Uh, probably the server tower size, uh, because um, yes, especially for beginners, bigger is better. Unless you have serious space issues in your home office situation, a bigger case is going to allow you uh, easier assembly, more options for organizing your components, uh, better, easier airflow cooling, um, and uh, it's going to allow you to expand later if you want to upgrade. What about, uh, we talk about power supply. I have an 850 um, to put things into perspective, but I don't know why I needed 850 over of something else. Okay, great. Yeah, certainly you're going to want to err on the side of caution, which is essentially bigger is better. Um, but in this case, that doesn't mean size. That means wattage capacity. Um, so 800, it's, it's a little bigger than I would normally go, but you probably needed it. Do you have one video card or two? I have one, one big Just one. One video card. Okay. Well, I mean that's okay because uh, the more wattage capacity that you have, then the less um, work that that uh, power supply is going to have to do to run your computer. So. When you're shopping for one, just read the reviews. Don't go with a cheapo off-brand. You get what you pay for. The most important thing is um, how you, how whoever built your computer probably did their math uh, to figure out that you need an 800 watt uh, power supply. Is you need the sum of your components wattage draw to equal a maximum, uh, in my opinion, 75% of your power supply's full capacity. So, for instance, if you buy a 400 watt power supply. Your components in total should never add up to more than 300 watts of electrical drawing potential. So you've got an 800 
watt power supply. So you've probably all your components probably add up to a maximum draw of 600 watts. If you go with a 90% ratio or even 100 and just max it out and let it run at full bore, yeah, probably for a minute. <laughs> but you're going to burn something out, uh, whether it's a component or the power supply itself. And that's no fun. And it's just going to cost you more money and give you more headaches in, lo in the long run. Uh, let's talk about uh, the motherboard. Um, that was one that really confused me. I was like, I don't know one motherboard from a, diff from a different one. So I'm sure that the more you pay for one, the better it's probably going to be. But I hope so. I hope so. Again, um, this is uh, one of the, the holy trinity of things that we're looking for ATX form factor. Um, you got to make sure that your motherboard is ATX because it needs to fit into an ATX case and it needs to match ATX uh, power supply connectors. Find a just a trusted, well-reviewed brand. Um, we're, as I understand, we're going to provide you a short list of brands and models we recommend. And even if you if you just Google it, use that Google Foo. Um, the last time I built a computer, I just looked up the the top rated and top sold. Your motherboard is going to decide um, so many different things for you. Um, and we're going to cover these things more in more detail next after we finish talking about motherboards. But the motherboard is talking about everything else anyway. Uh, it wants to know, do you need an Intel or an AMD processor? Um, personally, I'm going to recommend Intel. AMD is not bad. But from what I understand, it's generally better for advanced users, people who know what they're doing, um, know what kind of extra features AMD is capable and better at than Intel. Um, but for the most part, tomato, tomato, they're pretty well matched. Um, no wrong answer on Intel or AMD, but you have to choose one when you pick a motherboard because motherboards only support one or the other. There's no such thing as a motherboard that supports Intel and AMD. Not a thing. Um, also, your motherboard decides what kind of RAM you're going to need. Uh, the most up-to-date RAM currently is DDR5. Uh, your motherboard also decides what kind of hard drive you can use. Um, it's not quite as complicated as the other things. Most likely, you're going to be able to run both solid-state and mechanical hard drives Hey, Future Matt here. If you guys are liking where this content is going, uh, I've got a new thing going on here, and that is exclusive content for members only. So we have a literally an hour-long version of this same interview where we go much more in-depth on hard drives, graphics cards, VRAM, regular RAM, regular, like just freaking everything that has to do with building this thing. And uh, I want you guys to have that. I want you guys to see that. But the, the most regular Joe Schmo dude that's building a flight simulator, probably not going to watch it. So I want to give you guys access. Hit that subscribe button down below. Become a member today. Get access to exclusive member benefits like exclusive videos. Uh, we're going to give you guys special emojis and icons and stuff that you guys can use. We're also going to have exclusive live streams because people are jerks on live streams. So I'm only going to let you guys that actually really want to be here be here on my live streams go out and fly around i want you guys to be there we're going to do q a's i'm going to give you guys access to a lot of cool stuff so become a member today and let's get back to this interview let's talk about processors it's kind of like okay there's the in the intel route or there's the amd route intel or amd which way should i go and why would i take the route that i take well, to answer one of your questions in there, you can use NVIDIA with either AMD or Intel and vice versa. Um, that's that's going to work either way. But AMD also makes their own uh, Radeon series of graphics cards that, from what I've heard, work better if you're using an AMD uh, chipset. Uh, but personally, I'm an NVIDIA fanboy, and um, I used to use AMD processors, but I don't think I was getting the full potential out of them that I could have, and I've recently switched to Intel. I'm, I'm a casual nerd, and that's, that's why I'm here, is to help <laughs> your viewers also be casual nerds and get to what you really want to do, which is play some games. You just want to put a computer together. So um, to answer your other question, uh, which one should you choose? Um, again, personally, I'm, I'm voting Intel, um, but really it's like asking Ford or Chevy, Android or iPhone, beer or wine. They're all going to get you drunk, okay? It's going to be okay. Just make a decision and go with it. I'm going to push you slightly towards Intel. 
because I think it's just going to work. It's just going to give you what you want and desire with less muss and less fuss. The uh, the most important specs to look for. This is back to the basics. If you're if you're looking to if you're shopping out your own processor, you want to look at the uh, the megahertz or the gigahertz. A gigahertz is just a thousand megahertz. Um, so it just depends on where the comma or the dot is. Uh, so you want to look at uh, the hertage and the socket type. Uh, for instance, I have a five gigahertz, eight core, 1700 LGA. 1700 LGA is the socket type. Um, and five gigahertz is the speed. Eight cores is how many cores. Um, and the more cores, the faster it's going to be because each core is capable of processing um, its own thread of information. Let's talk about graphics cards and uh, what which one would be the way to go. Um, a lot of uh, flight sims nowadays are, you know, like mine's built. Technically, I've got one main monitor, and then I've got one off to the side that I can, you know, basically pull up Chrome and go to Sky Vector, do my flight planning, go, you know, watch YouTube while I'm on a long flight with autopilot, um, or do whatever I need to on that side monitor. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, graphics cards? I know they got the 4080s, 4090s on now, so... Yeah, I was going to say, I'm uh, not completely up to date on this. I'm about as up to date as you are. I've personally got a 3070 Ti that was supposed to have about the same graphics power as the the 2080. Um, and the 2080s during the pandemic were just impossible to get. Uh, graphics cards in general, though, of any um, use were impossible to get for a solid year. And, and that was exactly when I wanted a graphics card the most. I was like, mm, f my life, what luck. There's so much that you can say about graphics cards. I, I like NVIDIA. I've never had a problem with NVIDIA. And uh, yeah, 4090, 4080 is the most recent series that I'm aware of. Um, if if you don't want to buy the most, literally the most expensive card on the market, you're going to do just fine with 3070 or a 3080. I assume there's probably also a 3090. Let's talk about video RAM. How does that work? Does that is that built into the video card? So if you get a thirty a RTX thirty eighty, do you need to be looking at the specs on that? Is is that where you're? You can't upgrade that. You get what you get inside of that video card, right? That is absolutely correct. Uh, video RAM or VRAM is just baked in part of the graphics card, and you just need to pay attention to how much you're getting when you shop out that card. Um, and just like normal RAM, the more the merrier. Um, the more you have, the better you're going to be able to run things, the faster it's going to run things. Let's talk about the cooling system. I know that um, all these uh, all these PCs need to be, they need to be cooled. They run hot. I could literally use this computer as a freaking small room heater. Um, oh, yeah. So I can only imagine what would happen if you weren't running some kind of cooling system, whether it's water cooled, whether you got a fan in there, but what do you suggest? Basically, if you're using water cooling, um, yeah, those are basically your two options, water or air. Um, but the question I ask when it comes to water cooling is, are you a gambler? Because <laughs> if, you, if you're willing to take the small risk that your water cooling system is going to spring a leak and destroy literally your whole computer, it's the casual nerd that I am. I've never had a problem with air cooling. It works if you do it right, and it, you don't have to worry about any of that risk. Fans are completely reasonable. Uh, you need All you need to do is you need to pay attention to your cable management inside your case, uh, where you're placing your components. If you can avoid it, don't sandwich a bunch of hard drives on top of each other. Uh, if you can have any space between two video cards, do it. If you can't, you can't. You're going to want to be sure to remove any unused fittings. If you're not using that many hard drives, take those extra pieces out. They're just going to stop air from flowing through. I personally like to make sure I have at least two fans on the rear that blow in, two more on the front that also blow in, and two fans on the top that blow out. So because hot air rises and all your hot air, you're going to have two sources of fresh, cool air, and it's all going to naturally want to go up anyway. So you just encourage it to go up out of your PC. And that has worked like a charm for me for the entire time I've been building PCs. Let's talk about RAM real quick. I know we already talked about video RAM or VRAM. I know 
X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Simulator are probably going to recommend about uh, probably about 32. Some people are running 64. More than that, you're probably just overkilling it. You know, I can't tell you how many times an older person in my life has come to me and said, my computer's getting slow. What do I do? Well, the only thing that's going to help at this point might be more RAM. Um, RAM is the cowbell of computers. You want more. You always want more. <laughs> I could have used a little more cowbell. Need more cowbell, need more RAM. You will always need more RAM. Get as much of it as you can afford. <laughs> Literally as much as you can afford. Um, but that being said, um, 16 gigs is a great starting point. If they're recommending 32, do 32. That's great. Um, 64 if you're trying to impress a casual nerd. Uh, 128. <laughs> If you're a professional 3D designer doing renderings for Pixar, but then you probably have access to an entire server farm of a room full of computers, each with 128 uh, gigs of RAM. If you want more street cred as a geek or a nerd, <laughs> um, then this is absolutely 100% doable. So yeah, and it, these, these things have not fundamentally changed since the creation of computers. Um, only, only the protocols and the form factors have changed. Just remember, if you're determined to make your own build, to make sure all of your parts are compatible uh, and ask yourself these core questions. Um, starting with your motherboard, make sure it's ATX. Intel or AMD, does the socket type match your motherboard socket type? Heat sink and fan, do you want to do water or air? It must fit your case and your motherboard's dimensions. I recommend air. Solid state hard drive or mechanical hard drive? What does your motherboard support? Get that. Um, RAM, DDR5 or DDR4? Well, what can you afford? DDR4 is still pretty good, but DDR5 is the most recent. Um, that's what I go with. I would recommend that. It's getting more mainstream at this point. Um, and just know your motherboard's uh, maximum capacity. Probably 128 might be higher. Um, don't forget to match your clock speeds probably 3,200 megahertz. Um, case, go with something big and pretty. Not that big of a deal at the end of the day. ATX full size or server size, I recommend server size. Fans, make sure they fit your case. 120 millimeter, you can't go wrong. Uh, power supply, ATX, ATX, ATX. Um, probably at least 600 watts. Um, for if you're building a computer like um, what you and I both have, 800 is probably a good way to go. Just add up the wattage of every component, graphics cards to each stick of RAM, each hard drive, processor, motherboard, any extra cards or drives, multiply that by 1.5, boom. That's how much wattage you need from your power supply. Um, and just reference all of your specs back to your motherboard always. is That's your main question to ask yourself. It will get you all the way there. Is this compatible with my motherboard? When in doubt, Google it. Yes, you can build a computer. If you can build a flight sim, and uh, you know a lot of people are building airplanes, a lot of people are building their own things. If you can do that, you could probably build the uh, the PC as well. So you know, if you want to speed up the process and do quick build, just have somebody else do it. Go check out Josh's uh, podcasts. Uh, don't forget to come back, hit that like and subscribe button here on Flight Sim Guides. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And um, I'll make Josh come back here and uh, and and answer him because I probably won't be able to. So <laughs> yeah, check out my podcast. They're Beer with Buffy. Go to Beer with Buffy. Beer with Buffy dot com. We're on uh, iTunes, Spotify, Podbean. Podbean's our main host. Um, we we always are looking for reviews on iTunes. That helps us. Uh, that helps our algorithm the best. I also co-host Wubble Up a Pod Pod. It's a Rick and Morty podcast. As you may have guessed, Beer with Buffy is a Buffy the Vampire Slayer podcast. Um, we're, on, we're on all your favorite podcast platforms. Just type those in. We'll see you there. All right, man. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Uh, this has been great. It's been an honor. And we will catch up with you maybe in another video. Slate.